فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافاتي وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his household, his companions. May Allah bless every one of them and every one of us. Amin. Alhamdulillah, beautiful house belonging to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm always, always inspired by the presence of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, the role of the masjid is misunderstood by many of us in societies and communities of the Muslimin across the globe. I've seen people use the masjid and I've seen people abuse the masjid. And I've seen people not understand the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he calls it his own house. It is his house. So in the next few minutes, I'd like to attempt to explain some of the benefits of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Firstly, we must realize that it's not just for salah. It is not just to come and pray. I've come five times a day and that's it. A masjid should be a place that your heart is connected to. You meet your brothers. In the case of the sisters, you would meet. We travel across the globe and we see in the first world countries, there is no place in the home or in the house of an individual to be able to invite others. And where there is, many people do not want to invite others because they feel distant. So there is a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wherein if you were to visit it regularly, you would meet brothers and sisters solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You get to know your community. You get to know one another. You get to grow together. You get to discuss your problems and issues. You get to help solve and resolve. You get to know how you can reach out to other communities who may be struggling and suffering even if they were not Muslim. You get get to learn so much from one another. You get to let your children grow up knowing their identity because you have attended so regularly and you did not do so as a chore, but rather as an honor and a pleasure. If I were close to you, you would see me in your house on a regular basis and vice versa. So if anyone is found regular basis in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it shows the relationship they have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers, my sisters, make it your business to go into the houses of Allah on a regular basis, considering it an honor and a pleasure. Allah will save you and your offspring from much in terms of negativity and calamity. This is why the hadith of the seven who shall be granted a special shade on the day of judgment, one includes Rajulun Kalbuhu Mu'allakum Bil Masajid. A man whose heart is connected to the masjid. A person whose heart is connected to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're concerned about the next prayer. If you are, Allah will save you from sinning between the two prayers because your worry, your concern is about getting back to the house of Allah. When I finish my asr, I'm concerned about Maghrib and where I will go. I met a very wealthy person some time back and I was so impressed by the fact that I got to know and learn that he doesn't miss an adhan in the masjid for years. What does that mean? He has on his phone a masjid locator. Wherever he is going, no matter what he is doing, he makes sure that before the time of the salah is going to enter, he plans that he will already be inside the masjid and then the adhan will start. 
Why should I wait for the caller to call before I go? When I know that that's my time, let me go. Okay, that's on another level. We're not being asked to do that. But we're being asked, at least come to the house of Allah, meet the people. And when you come to the house of Allah to meet the people, it's not because it becomes a meeting place only and solely to serve your dunya and your material thoughts and needs and wants, etc. So when you come, I say, hey, that uncle owns a hardware. I'm going to see him at Dhur. I'm going to talk to him and I'm going to make sure I get a discount because you know what? I need a few things. So your intention for coming to the house of Allah is to meet an uncle in order to get a discount, in order to be able to purchase something. What have you done? You'll meet him. Salaam alaikum. Uncle, you know, I'm going to be coming to your business. Can you please give me a discount? You might not see that uncle again in the masjid because he's irritated at what? The fact that every time I go to the house of Allah, people are looking at me and greeting me only because they want a discount. I've given you one example. The same applies to a doctor, a lawyer, an accountant, anybody else. Let them come to the house of Allah and your duty towards them is to greet, to smile, to make them feel comfortable, to encourage them, to be able to say a few good words, to inspire. If not inspire, then at least remain silent. But you've said a good dua and you walk away. You are brothers with a smile. Subhanallah. What happens? I look forward to the next salah because I meet the brothers. We're sitting together. We share water. We break our fast together. What else happens? MashaAllah, you know, we talk good things about each other. We try and look positively. We've created a little kitty in order to be able to help people in need, etc. And no one looks at how much we put in, but the idea is to be able to reach out and help. Now you are fulfilling a little bit of the role of the masjid. Similarly, there needs to be activities in and around the masjid that are magnetizing to the youth such that when they come, they feel like they would love to be in the house of Allah. I recall visiting a masjid in one of the first world countries and it had free Wi-Fi. And I saw about 25, 30 children all over the masjid on their phones. And I said, initially, I didn't know it was Wi-Fi. I said, oh, these people are sitting on their phones. They must be reading Quran, mashallah. You know, you're supposed to have good thoughts. And it was perhaps... They said, no, we have free Wi-Fi so that the kids come in. In my mind, I cannot encourage or discourage that, but it is tailor-made to the needs of the society. I'd rather they come to a masjid to get something done than to go to a club and a pub and a wherever else to get the same thing done. MashaAllah, Sheikh, I'm not suggesting that you put up Wi-Fi here, but if you did, subhanAllah, the masjid will be packed. It will be the system. <laughs> it's already, subhanAllah, within the works. May Allah make it easy for us. So, and then when people come in, for example, I visited Australia and I noticed some of the composite centers, not just a masjid, but you have a sports place, you have a, a gym, you have a, a food place, you have, you know, an educational place, you have so many classrooms, you have secular studies, everything put together as a composite center. What would happen? You would be fulfilling the needs of the people, not just going to tell them, come to the masjid. And then you, you, you're not cared or bothered about their needs. I normally tell people, when you talk to someone, you will be most effective if that person feels you are genuine and sensitive to their needs. So rather than going to a masjid and going around and calling people, hey, come, 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 we'd like to talk to you. The people are working hard because they cannot, they cannot afford to put a plate of food in front of their family members on a daily basis. You tell them, listen to me, we're going to do something for you. We're going to come here, we're going to try and empower as many people as we can. Before you've even spoken to them about religion. So you try and empower, you try and educate, you show that you care for their children, you show that you're trying to help them, educate them, etc. The day you come, I promise you without even inviting people, they will hear that you're going to come and the masjid will be full. Why? This person cares for us. These people, they really care for us. We are really part of one family. I'm going to go, I'm going to make sure I'm a part of this. Subhanallah, make them feel wanted. Let them participate in a way. You know, back at home in Zimbabwe, mashallah, over the years, we've built quite a lot of masajid. Our policy is the community must participate in building because they will feel that I was, my father took part in building this mosque. I'm going to be there. To this day, we have people who attend masjids that are far away from their houses because of the sentimental value they have within them. Why? Hey, my father was a part of this. Here in Cape Town, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. You might be living somewhere in Constantia, but for Jumu'ah, you'll go all the way to a masjid that your dad or your grandfather was involved in because for you, it's a matter of pride. Mashallah. You know what? It's not wrong. It's not wrong if your intention is 
to uphold the spirit of service to the deen. My dad did this, so I'm going to keep on contributing. I tell you why, if you stop the contribution, <laughs> your kids are going to say, you know, my father used to go all the way there. But he did nothing for the masjid. You are still a generation that may have understood the sacrifice of your father or grandfather. Your generations to come may not understand because all you did was attend. Did you actively participate? Did you go into there with a mission? Did you explain to your children, listen, we need to contribute. And it's not necessarily only that masjid. Now there'll be another masjid. There'll be a third and a fourth. Subhanallah, these masajid will be across the globe. A masjid is a composite center. It's supposed to be a place where we discuss our issues, our problems. We discuss how we can uplift one another. And we come up with practical solutions. If you don't see a brother, or you don't see, for example, in the case of the sisters, you don't see a sister, you may want to ask, sister, you didn't attend the lesson today. That's very unlike you. Are you okay? Is everything fine? And the sister says, you know what? I was not well. I've had a bug and I was suffering all night. I couldn't attend. So you know what to do? Create a group of two or three sisters and go and visit that sister. And go and pray for her at her home. I promise you that is when you will be able to uplift society and the community. And don't go to say, right, we're coming for tea. We're going to be having snacks. She is ill as it is. You're not going for tea and snacks. If you really want, take something with you. Take a cake, take something else. Say, you know what? We're sitting here. We brought you a cake. We're going to sit and eat with you. Subhanallah. Rather than burden them with something. So let's think about it. We are losing very quickly our values. We are losing very quickly our morals. The generations are actually changing more rapidly than we had thought. And we've got to come up with solutions. And the masjid is indeed the ultimate solution. If only we used it and did not abuse it. When I say abuse, do you know what I'm talking about? A person who really only thinks that a masjid is for five salah and that's it. That is abuse. Why? You've insulted Allah. That's not the only purpose of a masjid. And I'm not wrong with what I said. You need to participate in activities that happen. You need to encourage the scholars in your midst to have lessons that will teach me the word of Allah. And you need to make sure you attend. You don't just say, oh, mashallah, you know what? I went for salah. The imam read very well. You never understood a word he said. And the imam immediately after that sat, were opening the Quran, explaining to you what Allah said. And you know what? 99% of the people walked away. The only guy sitting was the guy who had the keys of the door. If that's the case, you're abusing the house of Allah. You should feel relaxed and calm. And may Allah bless those who've made this possible. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant their marhumin jannatul firdaus. May Allah build for them a house in jannah. And the same for everyone else who's done for all other masajid across the globe. Generally, we are taught that when you put up a house of Allah, it should be slightly better in terms of quality, in terms of comfort than the homes that are in the area. Reason being, when someone comes into the house of Allah, they should not feel like going away in a rush. Imagine you go to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and mashallah, there is a fan. I'm talking of the places that are hot. We are lucky in these countries. The weather is really beautiful, mashallah. But there is a fan, there's beautiful carpet, there's lovely, you know, the ambience, the feeling, the surroundings, the people, etc. You feel so good. You don't even want to go home. But I tell you, if your house is absolutely comfortable and all the houses are so comfortable around and the masjid is the only place that's dilapidated, old, you know, you go there and there's no even, there's no proper facility, what will happen? The people who are supposed to be looking after that masjid have abused it. House of Allah, come on, do something about it. Another very interesting point. My brothers, my sisters, do not wait for people to come to you to collect for the house of Allah. You should work an average of a dollar or let's say in South Africa, we can give you a bigger discount. One rand per salah. That's your average per person. Did you hear what I just said? One rand per salah. You should work it out in your mind and say, right, my donation to this masjid is going to be one rand per salah I fulfilled in it. Obviously, this is not a hadith, nor is it a Quranic verse, you know, it's a suggestion. You don't wait for people to come and beg. You know, we, we're running, no one's here to pay the electricity. No one's here, there, whatever, and so on. The big masajid, we attend. Come on, you're a wealthy man. 
You can pay 10 rands for every salah. There was a carpet you used, there was water you used, you, your facility was there, you put your shoes out there, you walked in, the electricity you used, you came in and you walk out without even having contributed to that masjid. Are you not ashamed of yourself? How did you contribute to that house of Allah? So if you work out 5 rands a day, 10 days, 50 rands, a big amount, mashallah. You see, we can give you a discount, you can give yourself a discount. A rand a day. Subhanallah. If there are 500 musallis and you're getting 365 rands from each one, I promise you that masjid will be five star. Not only free Wi-Fi, they'll have absolutely the latest in terms of air conditioning units and sound systems and security systems and whatever else. Subhanallah. Your wife wants to know where you are. She can see from her iPhone just because there's the, the, the latest technology. Oh yeah, he's sitting in the first stuff. He's not telling me a lie. <laughs> By the way, that technology does exist. I was shocked to find it in some places. MashaAllah. So what happens? You contribute to the house of Allah. I don't want to mention other religions. But a point I want to raise is, go and check their donations. Wallahi, they give 10% of their salaries. Salaries with pride, with happiness, with joy. And they give it. And with us, we're being asked for... In fact, we're not really being asked for much actually. And we still don't. People come and ask, you know, brother, will you give to the masjid? Because you know, mashallah. I say, no, no. I gave all my donations, gone. Everything is down, gone. Subhanallah, the house of Allah. Not your house, not my house, not a party, not a nightclub, not a holiday to Honolulu and Hawaii, but to the house of Allah. Watch your answer. Be careful, be careful. Be careful because only those who have a heart shall Allah put within that heart to give to His cause. If your money is not worth coming into the house of Allah, you will never be convinced to give, thinking, I'm not going to give, and I will fix these people up, not realizing that, you know what? Allah doesn't want your money. He's going to let the work happen without your money. And this is why whenever I hear of people saying, this man doesn't want to donate to the masjid, I say, thank Allah. What do you mean, thank Allah? Thank Allah. Allah will only use the money of those whom He loves in His house. That's all. So if He doesn't give, it's a sign that Allah does not want His money here. Are you following what I'm saying? لِلدِّينِ إِلَاهٌ يَحْمِيهِ Wallahi, the deen has a God, has Allah who will look after it, not you. It's an honor for you to be used, to serve Allah. He doesn't need you. He will use anyone else. People you did not expect. They will be there giving their time, their wealth, their energy, their effort. And they will do it as an honor. Remember the story of the Kaaba. When Abraha had come to attack the Kaaba. And he had met the grandfather of Rasulullah as per one of the narrations. And they had taken away the camels of this man. And they were coming with the elephant to attack the Kaaba. And this man kept saying, give me my camels back. And this man says to him, you want your camels back. What's more important is the fact that we have come today to destroy the Kaaba. You know what was the response? And that is a very befitting response. He says, look, the Kaaba has a Lord who will take care of it. But the camels are mine. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. The reason why I'm not worried about the Kaaba is Allah will look after his house. I'm not worried. I'm worried about my camels because you know what? I need them back. Subhanallah. Whenever I read this, whenever I hear of it, I'm so inspired to do good because if I'm not in that good, I feel like I'm left out because maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I'm sinful. Maybe I committed something that Allah doesn't want me anymore to do the good work. As soon as I was told this masjid, I delayed my return to go home. And I said, I'll go on Monday rather, on sun rather than on Sunday. Because I felt within me, that if I'm not going to be there, perhaps Allah doesn't want me there. Subhanallah. I'll make an effort to be there. May Allah help us. May Allah help all of us. And the same applies, mashallah, I see lovely children of ours here seated in such an orderly fashion. I'm sure there's a lot of goodness that is happening. Please continue the good work. Please learn when you want to become a hafid. There is going to be shaitan coming to you trying to make you give up. Never give up. Continue. Go ahead. Please keep trying. Keep 
motivating yourself, talk to like-minded people and just go ahead. Few years later you will see the fruit of what you had dedicated yourself towards for the sake of Allah. If you jump off the train, the train will carry on without you. I remember an institution, there was a man who said, I'm not going to give here. And he was a huge donor. Guess what happened? The place progressed and the work increased in a way that people could not imagine. But that man was off the train. Subhanallah. So the loss was who? The work of Allah shall continue my brothers, my sisters with you or without you. Wallahi, it will continue. So it should be your business to ask yourself, am I going to remain on the train or walk out? And you will have misunderstanding sometimes. You will have things that may be negative. You may have issues because it's normal. These are the tests of Allah to test you. Will you remain in here? Were you doing it for me? Were you doing it for name and fame and gain? If you were doing it for me, you will remain. You will endure. You will try to resolve your matters. Or you might want to at times because you shifted area, because there was a misunderstanding that you could not resolve. You might want to shift, but your work continues for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, perhaps at a different house of Allah. It's still the house of Allah. Not that we want to attack a place we went to, but perhaps we might not be able to work there anymore because of circumstances. It has happened. We are human. We need to be realistic. But my work still continued. I'm not going to attack my old workplace or my old area or a masjid perhaps that I had a misunderstanding in that was irresolvable. May Allah forgive us and make us resolve all our matters. I'm not going to attack because I don't want to harm myself by saying something about the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala negatively. But I'm going to increase my work perhaps elsewhere. Wa'ardullahi wasi'ah. You know, the ard of Allah, the land and the earth is very broad. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. Now, I'm sure you understand what I meant when I said some people use the masjid and some people abuse the masjid. Let us make sure that we come. Let us make sure we are dressed very well when we come to the house of Allah. Let us make sure we are smelling very good as best as possible. Let us make sure we smile because if you create a feeling within the masjid of goodness and welcome, trust me, Allah will welcome you into Jannatul Firdaus. When people come into the masjid, if you are a person who hinders, harms, you know, looks at them with a dirty face, etc. And if they go away as a result of your misbehavior and your, your bad character, then you have a lot to answer. Don't do that. Welcome people. Smile at them. You don't have to let the little differences you have become, uh, you know, the point to be discussed in the house of Allah. May Allah strengthen us. May Allah grant us goodness. My brothers, my sisters, I've spoken for more than 20 minutes. And I really feel very, very honored and blessed to be here at the opening of this beautiful masjid in Kailicha, here in Cape Town, South Africa. May Allah bless all those who've made this possible and all those who shall attend and all those who have attended today and all those who will contribute positively towards it in whatever way, all those who shall make dua for it. And may Allah make us a vehicle of encouraging people to do good, even if we don't have a capacity financially to do the same. But trust me, if you encourage, the hadith says, or it is a rule of the, of, of the sharia. Whenever you show people towards goodness, you get a full reward of all those who've done that goodness as a result of your encouragement. So, Jazakumullah khair, and I really appreciate what the ulama have said before me, and what uh, has been done, and what shall be done, inshallah. May Allah bless those who've put this masjid up. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless my brothers and sisters. We are indeed part of one family, and we should be loving one another for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be caring for one another in the true sense, and we should liven up these houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like I said, and I'll end on this note. In a lot of first world countries, besides the masjid, they have no clean place to actually gather as a Muslim community. So therefore, we need to consider ourselves so fortunate, so fortunate that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us an environment whereby subhanallah, we come to the masjid and we have so many other places that will be in and around inshallah, so that the bond we've developed within the masjid can actually extend even beyond the masjid. So many people have met 
potential spouses for their children in the house of Allah. What better place? You know, you hear from a person, where did you meet your wife? Hey, don't even ask me, it was in the, in the nightclub, you know. That happens and it is happening. I'm not saying that marriage is doomed because you can ask Allah's forgiveness and guidance, mashallah. But what more, what more blessed answer would there be to say, you know what? It was in the masjid that my dad actually saw this guy and he said, look, there's a really, really good guy, etc. And vice versa. Sometimes your mom might have seen someone and they come and say, you know what, my son, there's a really good person I'd like to introduce to you. It has happened. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us be concerned about the marriages of our children. Jazakumullah khaira. Qulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabi Muhammad.